Okay, for chapter three of the Babok version three, um, I'll start by just, um, we already know the ground rules, but just a brief for people to go to look at it. I won't um, dwell on that. Um, the approach we're going to use for this presentation, it came in a template. We'll talk about the input for the chapter, the tasks, and each task we're going to break it down into the purpose, the description, the elements, and then we'll go to the guidelines, the tools and techniques, and the stakeholders, and then the outputs. Um, it's going to be for 30 minutes, then we'll go to a discussion and then do the quiz that was sent. Okay, um, the outline is going to be an overview of the knowledge area. I'm going, I broke it down into tasks, according to the various tasks for this um, knowledge area. And then the inputs, the purpose of, just like what I said before, but this is just outlined in a different way. Okay, so the overview, the business analysis planning, analysis planning knowledge area task. Um, firstly, define the overall method to conduct business analysis activities. They facilitate the approach for maintaining effective working relationship with stakeholders. They help define how decisions will be made and they help develop information management approach and also assess business analysis work for improvement. The list of tasks, um, according to the BABOC, uh, there are five tasks in the business um, analysis planning. Uh, okay, first piece is a planned business analysis approach. The second one is planned stakeholder engagement. The third one is planned business analysis governance. The fourth one is planned business analysis information management. And the last one is planned business analysis performance improvements. We'll go into more details as in subsequent slides. Okay, so we're going to talk about the inputs. I broke the inputs down into um, the various tasks because each of the tasks has um, various different inputs. So I just decided to highlight each of them according to the task. So for the plant business analysis approach, the input is just the needs of the, the enterprise or the initiative. The second task, plant stakeholder engagement has two needs, has two um, inputs, the needs and the business analysis approach. The third task has two inputs as well. Plan, uh, business analysis approach and the stakeholder engagement approach. The fourth task, which is planned business analysis information management, has three inputs. The business analysis approach, the stakeholder engagement approach, and the governance approach. And the fifth task has two inputs. The, the fifth task is identify business analysis perform, uh, performance improvements. So the inputs are performance objectives, external, and business analysis approach. Um, the purpose, I, I also um, highlighted the purpose for, very, for the various tasks. For the first um, task is define appropriate overall method to conduct business analysis activities on the given initiative. For the second task is, the purpose is to um, plan the approach for, for establishing and maintaining effective working relationship with the stakeholders. The third task, which is the planned business analysis governance, is the purpose is to define how decisions are made about requirements and designs, including reviews, change control, approvals, and prioritization. The fourth task, the purpose of the fourth task is to develop, uh, the fourth task is to plan business analysis information management. And the purpose is to develop an approach for how business analysis information will be stored and, and assessed. The fifth task, which is the, to identify the business analysis performance improvements, has the purpose as assess business analysis work and plan to improve processes where required. This is according to what is in the bell book. Now we're going to uh, describe each of the tasks according to what we have in the bell book. Um, for the first task, the description is given as uh, for plan business and analysis approach. It describes how and when each when task will be performed and deliverables produced. It identifies the initial set of techniques to use and also maybe standardized or formalized and 
and or tailor to the needs of the initiative. For the second task, am I going too fast? No, I don't think so. Okay, all right, thank you. For the second task is um, plant stakeholder engagement. The description as given in Babok is conduct thorough stakeholder analysis to identify stakeholders and analyze their characteristics. Then secondly, to use, um, to, is used to define best collaboration and communication approaches and appropriately plan for stakeholder risks. Also, the planned stakeholder engagement task is used to, is important since new and different techniques for stakeholder management increase as stakeholder um, increase, as stakeholders increase. Then the third task, plan business analysis governance. It ensures that governance process is in place and clarifies any ambiguities within it. It also identifies the decision makers, the processes, the information required and the information required for the decisions to be made. It also defines, uh, describes how approvals and prioritization of decisions are made for requirements and for design. Sorry. Uh, The fourth is um, plan business analysis information management. Information management entails identifying how information should be organized, the level of detail at which the information should be captured, any relationship between the information, how information may be used across multiple initiatives and throughout the enterprise, also how information should be assessed and stored, and the characteristics about the information that must be maintained. The fifth task is um, identify business analysis process and in performance improvement. To monitor and improve performance is necessary to establish measures, performance measures, to conduct performance analysis, to report on the results of the analysis, and to identify preventive, corrective, and developmental actions. We're going to talk about the elements. For, and I'm, I broke them down as well. For every um, area we're, we're looking at, I broke it down into the various tasks um, listed in the book. So for plan business analysis approach, we have the, the elements listed are the planning approach, the formality and the level of detail of business, the analysis deliverables, business analysis activities, Timing of business analysis work, complexity and risk, and the acceptance. Then for the second task, planning stakeholder engagement. The elements are perform stakeholder analysis, the roles of the various stakeholders, attitudes, the decision-making authority of the various stakeholders, their level of power or influence um, to define stakeholder collaboration, and then stakeholder communication needs. The third um, task we're going to talk about is the plan business analysis governance. And the elements are listed as decision making. We're going to plan how the decision making is going to be done, change control process, plan prioritization approach, plan for approvals. And the fourth element, the fourth task has the elements broken down as organization of business analysis information, the level of abstraction. The, to plan the traceability approach, you plan for requirements reuse, plan for storage and access, and also requirements attributes. The fifth task has its identified business analysis performance improvement, has the elements listed as performance analysis, assessment measures, analyze results, and then recommend actions for improvement. The guidelines and tools um, by the various tasks are, for the planned business analysis approach, we have business analysis performance assessment. We have the business policies, SPAC judgment, the methodologies and the frameworks, stakeholder engagement approach. Then the second task, plan stakeholder engagement. For the guidelines and tools are business analysis performance assessment, change strategy, current state description. For the third task, that is the planned business analysis governance. 
we have the guidelines and tools as business analysis, performance assessment, business policies, current state description, and the legal, legal and regulatory um, uh, details associated with that initiative. The fourth task has the guidelines and tools as business analysis, performance assessment, the business policies, information management tools, and legal and regulatory information. And the last task has only one guideline and two listed. That is organizational performance standards. Then we'll go to the techniques. The, the techniques are actually very much, I'll just, um, I may be a bit faster. Um, for the task plan business analysis approach, we have it's the techniques listed according to the Bible guide is um, brainstorming, business cases, document analysis, estimation, financial analysis, functional decomposition, interviews, item tracking, lessons learned, process modeling, reviews, risk analysis and management, scope modeling, survey and questionnaire, slash, and then workshop. There was no space, I had to just add that one there. And for plan stakeholder engagement, we have the techniques listed as brainstorming, business rules analysis, document analysis, interviews, lessons learned, mind mapping, organizational modeling, process modeling, risk analysis and management, scope modeling, stakeholder lists, map or personas, survey or questionnaire, and workshops. For the third task, which is um, plan business analysis governance, the techniques listed are brainstorming, document analysis, interviews, item tracking, lessons learned, organizational modeling, process modeling, reviews, survey or questionnaire, and workshops. And the fourth task, Plan business analysis information management. We have brainstorming, interviews, item tracking, lessons learned, mind mapping, process modeling, survey or questionnaire, workshops. And the last um, task, identify business analysis performance improvement. We have brainstorming, interviews, item tracking, lessons learned, metrics and key performance indicators, observation, process analysis, process modeling, reviews, risk analysis and management, root cause analysis, survey or questionnaire, and workshop. Now we'll go to the stakeholder. Um, for the stakeholders, I also, uh, for the stakeholders, according to the various tasks, it's um, worthy to note that the business analyst is a stakeholder in all business analyst, analysis activities. So you may not see it listed here, but they just have it at the back of your mind that the business analyst is a stakeholder in all business analysis activities. So the other stakeholders are, for plan, plan business analysis approach, we have the domain subject matter expert. Then we have the project manager, we have the regulator and the sponsor. For the plan stakeholder engagement, we have customer, domain subject matter respect, end user, the project management manager, the regulator, the sponsor, and the supplier. And for plan business analysis governance, we have domain subject matter respect, project manager, regulator, sponsor. And for the fourth task, which is the plan business analysis information management, the stakeholders are the domain subject matter expert, the regulator and the sponsor. Then for the fifth task, which is the identify business analysis performance improvement, we have the domain SME, the project manager and the sponsor. The outputs for each of the, each of the um, tasks, we have only one output. For the plan business analysis approach, we have the business analysis approach as the final output. 
for the planned stakeholder engagement, we have the stakeholder, stakeholder engagement approach as the final out, output. For the planned business analysis governance, we have the governance approach as the output. For planned business analysis information management, we have information management approach as the output. And for identify business analysis performance improvement, we have business analysis performance assessment as the final output. So with this, we come to the end of our slide and then we're open to um, discussion. Thank you. So I'll stop sharing my screen now, Harry. No, you can leave your screen on. Okay. Uh, Does anyone have any contribution? Thanks, Miriam, for helping us summarize chapter three. Thank you. Thank you for the detailed work. Thank you. Yeah, we're all supposed to read and come contribute, right? So it's not just for Miriam. She has done a great job of summarizing the content, the PowerPoint. Maybe um, somebody has a question, maybe that would help trigger the discussion. Okay, Marian, can you go back to the slide that listed all the um, the tasks for this knowledge area? I think there was one that summarized it. Okay, yes, here. Please um, ignore my background noise, please. Um, I, I just want to summarize all what she said or just talk about each of this knowledge, um, the task under this knowledge area. Basically, this knowledge area is talking about um, planning, your business analysis work. And it broke it down into five areas that needs to be planned. So the first is the planned business analysis approach. Basically, this is the sum total of all your plan. How would you get the work done? If it's a technology implementation, what are the steps you are going to take from beginning to end? If it's a process work you need to do, what are the steps? How would you start? What, what are the steps you take from beginning to end? What are... Um, the things you need to do to make sure you meet the objective of your stakeholders. So it entails a whole lot of um, all planning your, your um, as the name implies, your approach. Then the second one, how would you engage with your stakeholders? In any business analysis engagement, there's always a stakeholder you are interacting with. Sorry about that. So, um, so the second one talks about how you engage with your stakeholders. So it involves identifying who your stakeholders is, doing an analysis to know their, um, their interest, their decision-making power, their attitudes, understanding them and knowing how to engage with them, agreeing how you communicate with them, the periodicity of communicating with them, just making sure you know their preference for communication and how you manage them throughout your um, initiative. The third one talks about your governance approach. So for when you are doing your work, somebody, you have a project for a business owner that would approve your, you don't own the budget for a project. Somebody else will own that budget. Those changes.
Okay, I think um, Oge is having some issues at uh, end. Um, I'll just take it over from here. Um, she was talking about the plan business analysis um, governance as 3.3, and this entails um, how do we make decisions for whatever projects we are working on? How do we make decisions about our requirements, designs, change control, approvals, and prioritization? And this is very key, um, especially for areas where um, there are changes to um, requirements. It's usually the downfall of several of projects I've seen, you know, where governance structure is not properly um, stated. So maybe after you have your requirements signed off, somebody comes up to say, oh, I have new requirements. You know, without your governance in place, without your um, requirements change management in place, um, you just found out you have um, scope creep, you know, um, in, uh, come into the project and rework. And what that does is that it makes your budget, takes your budget on a free run. Um, the other one is the plan um, business analysis um, information management. And this is where we ensure that um, our information is properly stored and assessed. Remember that everything we are doing now, all the tax is about planning, planning, planning. We are not actually doing the work, but we are just making sure that everything we need to do a successful job, you know, is in place. We have the structure in place. We have the processes in place. So for this place, this is where we um, develop an approach of how business analysis information is going to be stored and um, assessed. Um, how will our requirements be stored? How will it be disseminated? What about our scope, stakeholder concerns, our elicitation results, our solution options, our designs, user stories? You know, so those, we just make sure that all those things is properly defined how those things will be collected and stored and what detail in which it will be collected and, and stored. Uh, the next thing is the business um, analysis performance improvement. So when we are doing our business analysis work, of course, we have to find a way to ensure that continuous improvement is factored into what we are doing as business analysts. So this, uh, the purpose of this task is to assess business analysis work and plan to improve the processes uh, when necessary. Uh, I don't know if you've heard of that thing that if you don't measure, you cannot improve. So one of the key things here is to establish our performance measures. So how are we going to how are we going to ensure that uh, that uh, or, or what will our performance be like? What are we going to measure? You know, at least when we figure out what we are going to measure, we can put the metrics down, we can put the uh, results and the performance analysis down. Then we know if we are getting better or we are falling short of our targets or we need to improve. So those are the um, um, list of tasks. Um, okay, those are the list of tasks that uh, we're working on today. Now, um, Okay, I don't know if you are still online. So I wouldn't want to repeat all the things Mariana said because she has already said them. You know, so I, I, I don't know if anyone has any question, uh, but for me, this is a very important part of business analysis that, um, that um, apart from even writing the exam, you know, that a BA really needs to know no, no thoroughly to be able to do an effective work. So I don't know if there's any question or contribution, or maybe Yogi has something to say. Okay, I'm not hearing any.
Okay, so um, it seems like there are no questions or clarifications. Um, Marianne, I don't know, the, the last time you worked on some questions, yeah. is it at this stage that you work on the questions? Because I don't have the list of questions. Yes, yeah, sorry, let me, let me get this. Okay. Okay, so the questions are here now. Hello everyone, can, you, can, I, can anybody hear me? Yes, I yes. can hear you. Yes. Okay. Hear you. Okay, oh, so these are the list of questions for this week. So, um, do I need to read it out? Please do, the way we did it last week. Okay, so um, question number one, Jennifer is a BA who was recently hired to elicit requirements for a new reporting solution. She is new to the organization and has begun analyzing the stakeholders who will be directly or indirectly impacted by the solution. Which of the following aspects of the stakeholders should she analyze? A, name, names, roles, and attitudes. B, attitudes level of influence and rules. C, supervisors, authority over business analysis, activities and, and attitudes. D, salaries, attitudes and management perspective. So which one is the correct answer? I think... I'll go with C. C. Yes. Okay. So C. So number two. We'll check it at the end of the... Maybe we can talk about why we chose C. Uh, yeah, please, that would be great. Yeah. So why do you think the answer is C? Out of all the options, that seems to have the options that are relevant to what the BA needs to do. So you must know what authority that person has over the analysis activities and of course that person's disposition and attitude and of course who does that person report to okay um i don't think it's uh, b attitudes level of influence and roles yeah why do you think it's provide some matters yeah if they are like if they are being recalcitrant, we can also t have their supervisors impute on it. I don't know. That's me thinking. Okay. I, is that, I guess we'll find out at the end. Okay. Okay. So let's go to number two. Which of the following is a qualitative measure that can be used to assess business analysis work? A, the number of review cycles needed for the BRD. B, how many resources were available to complete the requirements elicitation task? C, the number of business objectives met by the solution. D, whether the BA has the skills or knowledge to perform the assigned work. So which, is, which do we think? Is D. Is everybody agreeing with D? And why D? Qualitative is the word there. All others are quantitative. How many? How many? Number. Oh. Okay. I agree with you. I don't know if others agree, but I think it's also D. Okay. okay. So let's go to number three. There is no opposition. Um, which of the following is not a technique used for planning business analysis governance? Item tracking, mind mapping, document analysis, organizational modeling. We talked about it a few minutes ago. <laughs> uh, Governance. 
is my why did you pick C? I personally think is um, B. I don't know. I may be wrong. I, I can't remember. Yeah. I, I... Do you want to pass and go to the next question and check at the end? Uh, I think we still have some more time. Maybe, I don't know. I'm not, I've not really gotten any answers. Somebody chose C. Mm, okay. In the chat. Okay, I uh, well, I didn't see that. Okay. Um okay, so number four. Mm. Ben the business the BA is working with a group of stakeholders who have never worked with the BA before. They are uncertain about the business analysis activities that Ben is performing and why they are being performed, particularly where it involves their participation. They think that some of their activities are a waste of time. To address their concerns, Ben decides, decided to conduct performance analysis to ensure that his business analy analysis activities were continuing to deliver value to those stakeholders. Which core concept is Ben addressing? A, risk. B, value. C, stakeholders. D, context. Value. <laughs> yeah, I think yeah. And the reason why is why value and why not stakeholders? Because the stakeholders are not happy. Yeah, but and he's trying to address the stakeholders' concerns. They think that some of the activities are a waste of time. To address their concern, Ben decided to conduct performance analysis to ensure that his activities were continuing to deliver value so they are looking out for value they are not getting value that's why they are just grown to to those stakeholders so yeah yeah that's that's they are really attentive that's really good um any other opposing or different answer i agree with the value yeah. so we'll see at the end then um five if a BA decides on a business analysis approach, where solution iterations are defined to arrive at the best solution, what type of business analysis approach is this? A, cyclical. B, analytical. C, adaptive. D, predictive. Adaptive. Why, sir? Adaptive goes on short iterations. Yeah. So do we do we agree that can, it's adaptive? Can you explain more? Because for me, those terms are big terms. I, I um, adaptive goes on short iteration. Can you break it down further? Uh, it means that adaptive is something like um uh rad rapid development where you where you do some tax on like uh, like a closed system um, like a closed system you do the tax then you improve on it you improve on it after feedback that's adaptive okay thank you keyword is iteration once there's iteration, then it's ad adaptive. Okay. So see, let's go to number six. What are the inputs to the business analysis governance task? A, business analysis approach and stakeholder engagement approach. B, business analysis approach and conduct a visitation. C, communicate business analysis information and stakeholder engagement approach. D, assess risk and business analysis approach. Which the is answer the answer? is a, a, a approach and um, st stakeholder engagement approach. Any um, contrary response? No. Is anyone opposing or should we go ahead? 
Because this one is a text, is in is something written, so I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> so number six. So you said what um I didn't get the answer again, please. Business analysis approach and stakeholder. Yeah, approach and stakeholder engagement. Okay, so A. Approach. Yes. All right, number seven. Which of the following is not a common requirement attribute? Absolute reference. B preference. C priority. D complexity. <laughs> Absolute reference. Yeah. Why do I'm you not, think it's uh, yeah? I'm not too sure, but I know there is for you come and there is pro, uh, priority and pref, um, preferences. I'm thinking about complexity. I've seen it before somewhere, but I know absolute reference. Yeah, I, I personally haven't heard of absolute reference. Too. Um, well, I don't know if Oge and Harry have. Um, inputs on this particular question. Mm. There's absolute reference. Okay. You said there is absolute reference? Yes. Hmm. Okay, so. I think maybe when we get to the end, we can discuss it for Okay, so let's, which answer we need absolute reference for everybody or do we go with complexity? Okay, let me go with absolute reference. That's the first speaker I said. So number eight, Brenda is a BA on a project that does releases every three months. She needs to plan the BA approach for the coming upcoming release. Numerous enhancements are requested by different stakeholders within the organization. There are also requirements that are necessary as a result of regulatory changes impacting the organization. With so many tasks, with so many asks being made, Brenda realizes that the specific BA approach to be used could be dependent on which of the requests are actually going to be fulfilled in the next release. Brenda has advised the director of the program to review the request for validity and see if justification can be made for allocating resources to each request. Which artifact is she advising the director to address? To assess a requirements prioritization b root cause analysis c business case d financial analysis I, I think it's requirements prioritization, but no, it is requirements prioritization. Yeah. Okay. So, is everybody agree with that, or anybody dif um, differing? Uh, why do you think it's requirements prioritization? It needs to know. Brenda needs to know which of the requirements in, uh, he has to release first, depending on on the validity and justification for allocating resources. Yeah. So okay. I guess there is a prerequisite to, to the uh, requirements. So you have to prioritize them according to how they allocate resources. Okay, great. Okay, let's go to number nine. Pretty is a, is a BA working in a highly regulated government and department. She's working on a project that requires the replacement of 15 legacy reporting systems within a, with a single thing, sorry, 15 legacy reporting systems with a single system. There are many stakeholder groups that she needs to consult, she needs to consult with in order to make sure their requirements are elicited and documented. Patricia, the project sponsor, has stated that the new single system the existing and new users of the new system and the processes by which the different user groups will use the system must be well defined before the solution is even built. What type of business approach is pretty, should pretty employ? A, recursive, 
B, comprehensive. C, predictive. D, adaptive. Adaptive. Uh, sorry, predictive. It must be well defined before the solution is even built. built. The end yeah, must be done before you started. Yes, yeah. it must. It must. It's a predictive um approach. Yes. Yeah. Okay. I think so too. Is is there is, is there anybody with a different opinion? Okay, so we'll go with predictive, Steve. Number 10, in order for requirements to be reused, they must be subjective, A, subjective and ambiguous, B, clearly named and defined, C, stored in the repository that prevents access by other business analysts, D, written in text. Clearly named and defined, B. Why do you think Definitely. Yeah, for a for an, for a requirement to be reused, it must be clearly named and defined uh, according to what it is used for and the the result it will give. Okay. Anybody? Anybody with a different or um a different opinion? It's not even a difference of opinion. It's other <laughs> options are, uh, are, are, just, are other options are just off. <laughs> okay, so we'll go to the answer key. All right. So number one, the answer we answered C, but they said B. Uh, let's look at the question. Yeah. So, <coughs> so number one, Jennifer is a BA. Who was? I said this. I I I said it's B now. Yeah. Ah. I chose B. Check my chat. I chose you. Oh, okay, no, I'm I chose not seeing B. the chat. My screen is... Yeah, actually, I chose B too. Yeah. I the attitude, that... level of influence and roles, that's the key, yes, key I, attitude. I, I, I don't for, think the uh, supervisor has any business. No, 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 no. Yeah. But yeah, but it's a big thing. Yeah. So why should we ignore the supervisor? Um, Supervisors might not be a stakeholder. Exactly. The stakeholder might just be the the project manager and the sponsor. Yeah. So what I want to point out that in your organization, uh, your supervisor may be your stakeholder. But remember that this exam is written according to Babo. And in Babo, they never listed the supervisor as a stakeholder. So let's be guided. Answer according to Babo. <laughs> All right. Absolutely now. So number two, the answer is D, and we answered D, so we're correct. Number three, the answer is Lisa. Now let's go back. I let's don't think number, number two. Number two, the answer D. And which of the following is a qualitative measure? Okay, okay, yeah, the answer is D. Yeah, the answer was quite correct. So number three, we answered C, but the answer is B here. Let's see. Mm -hmm. so let's check it out. Mind, mind mapping. Right. Yeah. Which of the following is not a technique used for planning business analysis governance? So we answered document analysis, but the answer is mind mapping. Okay, so let's go to number four. Number four, we answered B, and the answer is B. So let's just go through it again. B. Then the BA is working with a group of stakeholders who have never worked with a BA before. They are uncertain about the business analysis activities that Ben is performing and why they're being performed, particularly where it involves their participation. They think the activities are a waste of time. To address their concerns, Ben decided to conduct performance analysis to ensure that his BA activities were continuing to deliver value to the stakeholders. Which core concept is Ben addressing? And we got it right as value. So let's go to number five. Um, we answered C and the answer is C. So let's just, okay, we, they want to talk about iterations and what business approach. So we now know that um, when iteration, when it talks about iteration, it, it refers to the adaptive approach. Should I read the question again? No, 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 no. Yeah, so number six. 
is the answer here is A, I will answer A. So what are the inputs to the plan business analysis here? So this one was a textbook um, answer. Business analysis approach. Business analysis approach and stakeholder engagement approach. So we'll go to number seven. Um, the answer is B here and we answered A. So let's check it out. Which of the following is not a common business, a common requirements attribute? We answered, absolute. yeah, absolute reference. Though Harry said there was absolute reference, but we answered absolute reference. And they say the answer is preference. So uh, what, is in, what is in Babok is priority, I think, not preference. So I think that's where we got it mixed up. And they also, it was also mentioned here. Priority. So the answer is preference. Preference is not a common requirement actually. So number eight. We answered A and the answer is C. So let's see what Brenda is a BA on a project hmm, that does releases every three months. Mm -hmm. He plans to he needs to plan the BA approach for the upcoming release. The numerous enhancements are requested by different stakeholders within the organization. There are also some requirements that are necessary as a result of regulatory changes impacting the organization. <coughs> Sorry, with so many asks being made, Brenda realizes that the specific BA approach to be used to be dependent on the request, on which requests are actually going to be fulfilled in the next release. Brenda has, has advised the director of the program to review the request for validity and to see the justification, which if justification can be the answer is business case, right? Um, we answered requirements. We answered for it, parameter. I guess the answer is business case, are we? Yes, the answer is business case. Yeah, yeah. I remember sometime when I was reading through if you are if you are trying to allocate resources, business case deals with um uh, the the successful output of um of the business analysis approach which deals more about allocating of resources mm, okay. uh, i i do remember where i read that from from yeah. the bar book okay that's, the that's really... page. i forgot it yeah the page is there yeah the page is um Page 29 of the Babok. The pages are listed. So we can we can have we can um, revisit this in our own spare time. So let's go to question number nine. Um, the answer is C and we answered C. So uh, this is the one talking about the the process is being well defined before the solution is even built. And we answered predictive, which was the correct answer. So for number 10, the answer is B. And we answered B. Um, this is the one that talks about, oh, the one with the very clear answer. <laughs> yeah. The requirements being clearly named and defined before they can be reused. So we've come to the end of the um, questions and answers. Um, I will now hand over to Ogie and Harry to take over and also to people in the house. If everyone has any contribution or questions they want to add. Okay, um, thank you for the for taking that, uh, Marianne, and uh, for also for the questions and for everybody that participated. I don't know, does anybody have any questions or you know, anything you want to say? Uh, for me, I just quickly want to talk about the absolute reference as a 
um, an attribute of a requirement. So the absolute reference is a unique identifier that is given to a particular requirement. And that unique identifier, you know, remains with that requirement for the life cycle of that requirement. So even if you are reusing that requirement for another pro project, it doesn't lose that unique identifier. So that's what it means by absolute reference. So that reference is not altered. It cannot be reused for as long as that requirement is still in the um, requirements repository or wherever you keep your requirements. So that's just that. I don't know if um, Uge has anything to contribute or anyone before we call it a day. Okay, um, if we have any questions you want us to look at, please you can bring it or send it to us earlier. We can review it and we can discuss it. And I wish all of us a happy reading and uh, retentive memories to even as we read this and success even as we write our exams. Thank so, you. There's nothing else to say. Thank you everyone for attending. The next, um, the next class. You said what? The next um appointment uh, yeah we would, we would we would send that information before the next class okay so we'll give you ample time for that yeah okay thank you so much thank you take care of yourself bye everybody bye